I'd like to tell you a story about a group of amazing people who created a moment in history. When it happened, it was unique. Maybe it still is. The story begins on a farm, like this one. More than 10,000 people would become a part of the experience, including my grandfather. Enjoy the story. The United States Armed Forces and much of the free world was undergoing a drastic food shortage. The challenge to grow and supply food for this crisis was accepted by Seabrook Farms, located near the city of Bridgeton in rural Cumberland County. Seabrook Farms needed workers to grow and process food. Thousands of men and women who had been uprooted and displaced by war or poverty needed jobs and a new beginning. It was perhaps the biggest change in your life, but you were willing to make that sacrifice. Oh, for something better. So it was that Seabrook Farms went looking for workers. They found them in the internment camps that housed thousands of Japanese Americans. They found them in the West Indies and Appalachia. African American girls from the Deep South and Jewish girls from New York City all spent their summers in the 1940s on vegetable assembly lines at Seabrook. They found workers in the displaced persons camps of post-war Europe. There they found families without a future, without hope, Estonians, Poles, Ukrainians, Germans, Latvians, Yugoslavians, and others. By the mid-50s, Seabrook Farms had become the first and only rural global village of its kind in America. The Seabrook story began in 1913, when Charles Seabrook, or CF as he was called, founded the business. His problem was that he had plenty of land, but not enough workers. CF's genius was his ability to find people who desperately wanted to work and to convince them to come to Seabrook. By the 1940s and 50s, the Seabrook workforce represented 25 countries and spoke 30 languages. Seabrook Farms had become a truly world-class agribusiness run by people of the world who lived and worked and sent their children to school in a global village never equaled before or since. In 1955, Life Magazine did a feature article on Seabrook and referred to the farm as the biggest vegetable factory on earth. Jack Seabrook, youngest son of CF, grew up next to the worker housing that was called the Italian Village. He has fond memories of his childhood there. My natural playmates were the children of workers at the farm. They were all around me. And uh, my two best friends maybe illustrate the point. Uh, one was named Presto, and he was the son of Sicilian immigrants. Uh, the other was named Paul, and he was the son of black immigrants from South Carolina. You speak in different colors, you think in different words, from many different nations, and still you get along. Destination. For Seabrook children, Starting over meant going to a school unlike any other in rural America. The Seabrook School included kindergarten through grade eight. In every classroom, seated side by side, were children of different colors, who might speak a language other than English, and whose cultures were dissimilar. Kenneth Hill, now mayor of Upper Deerfield, New Jersey, migrated with his parents from the mountains of Tennessee. Like most families recruited from Appalachia, Living at Seabrook was a major adjustment. When I first came to the Seabrook school, I noticed that many of the classmates were different than I was, but it didn't really seem to matter to me and I didn't care. Uh, there was different ethnic backgrounds and different skin colors and all, but we all seemed to get along very well. Ingrid Hawk, who was born in Germany and came from a displaced persons camp, entered Seabrook school at age five. Soon, she was immersed in the English language and the customs of children different from her. We arrived here in March of 1952 and mom didn't have to start work immediately because the season hadn't really started yet but once the season got rolling then mom and dad were both working and I was put into the daycare in the Seabrook village where all the children were and um, after, the, after the summer was over I started my formal education 
in kindergarten here, and that's where we easily picked, where I easily picked up the English language. Made friends with a lot of the different children that were there from Europe, from the South, blacks, whites, the Japanese, and everybody got along great. And it really wasn't until later, when I was out of school, and looked back on those years and all the different nationalities that we had here, that I realized what a unique situation we were in as I was growing up. I, one thing that I learned coming to Seabrook, because mostly, you know, in the southern state, they're segregated. Here you just had a chance, you know, you met a lot of people, and it didn't make any difference, you know. 